Today I'll be talking about how to interpret DOE results. In the last video I made, I did a design of experiments on this part to look at the length, width at end of fill, flatness, the width of the gate, and the width of the ribs. I will be looking at the results of this analysis today to see what type of information we can gain. First, you want to take a look at the log files. Go to the DOE log tab. Here you can see the variables that you selected and what their upper and lower limits are. I sent the coolant control between 8,000 and 12,000. I put the dimension scale factor on the ribs on the inside of this part to be 25% plus or minus. I did a melt temperature range between 240 and 280 C, and I did a coolant inlet temperature range between 20 and 30 C, mold open time between four to six seconds, and the duration was simplified to minus one and plus one, which is just how DOEs show the minimum and maximum value. Again, I have injection pack packing cooling time between 24 to 36 seconds, and again, the coolant control um, on the other cooling line is between 8,000 to 12,000. Below this, you can see the weights that you assigned. So again, I have one assigned for the circuit and coolant temperature, five for the cycle time, um, 10 for the sink mark depth, one for the edge nodes, one for the length, and 10 for the width by gate, and 10 for the width by end of fill. Here you can see how mold flow actually ranked the percentage of which factors were impacting each quality criteria the most. For example, sink mark depth. Here you can see that melt temperature had a 42% impact, whereas the coolant inlet temperature only had a 3% impact. So this could show you that at the press, you wouldn't want to spend much time adjusting the mold temperature when you could be adjusting the melt temperature. Another thing you can see is exactly what the optimum numbers are. So without even going into graphs or any kind of data, it just shows you exactly what you should select for each quality criteria. And you can look at them and balance out which ones are more important and how to get the best part and how to do, have the best processing window. As you can see, you get all the normal results that you usually do, like fill time. But today I'm going to focus on the DOE folder. So first there's the results comparison explorer. Here you can see a summary of all the DOEs. You can even filter results so that if you can't have a dimension outside of a certain range, you can filter out the processing conditions that would result in a dimension getting out of tolerance. For example, if this length couldn't be over 118, we could shorten it so that it is only getting up until that point. And then it would filter out the results. You can also filter it for specific quality criteria that you're looking for. Next, let's look at the sink mark depth DOE response surface plot. Here you can see that as the melt temperature decreases, the sink mark depth decreases. You can find information like this using these three three-dimensional plots. You can even use a slider bar to see how changing the width of the ribs will affect the sink mark depth. As you can see, the smaller the ribs are, the lower the sink mark depth. Next, let's take a look at deflection all effects. So this will show you how your part is warping. You can use these slider bars to either increase or decrease the amount of packing pressure you would see on the part. As you can see, the lower the packing pressure, the higher the chances for warp. You can do the same thing with melt temperature. Again, the higher the melt temperature, the more likely it is to warp. As you can see, DOEs are easy to run and give you a lot of great information without having to spend a lot of time and money at the press.